This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Motorola Zoom Android tablet. This is the first Honeycomb Android OS 3.0 tablet on the market, and it has a 10.1 inch capacitive multi touch display running at 1280 by 800 resolution, making it also the highest resolution Android tablet currently on the market. You can see Honeycomb looks quite a bit different than standard Android. We're going to take a look at that in a minute after we do the hardware tour. You see there's a fairly narrow bezel here, which is great when you're bringing up the on-screen keyboard that we'll show you later. You don't have a whole lot of bezel between you and the keyboard. You've got the front-facing 2 megapixel video chat camera up top here. Light sensor down the bottom. And here we have a whole lot of little ports. We have the standard micro USB port and micro HDMI port. And this is a sensor for a dock connector over here. This is your charging hole right here, and that's the microphone. This is a nice metal chassis, and it's got a soft touch finish, and you would think soft touch finish, great, it's not going to pick up fingerprints. Well, as you can see, it's gotten a lot of fingerprints already. Looks nice and feels nice, other than the fingerprint issue. This part is plastic up here because their antennas underneath, and they don't want to block wireless reception. You have dual speakers here, stereo speakers. Here's your 5 megapixel autofocus main camera. They can shoot 720p video. Quite good video in fact. Dual LED flash. This is your power button right here which feels really good when you're holding the device. It's kind of natural. Your hands are there. If you want to just hit the power button you can do so. Up top here's your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and under this door there are slots for SIM card and micro SD card. You can see this is a tray to hold the SIM card for LTE when the LTE upgrade is available and you'll have to send that back to Motorola. There's no charge. And it can take up to six business days for them to put the LTE radio in. This is the micro SD card slot. This also has a plastic dummy in here because it needs a software update apparently to see the card. Not the end of the world for the moment though because this has 32 gigs of internal flash storage so you're not going to be running out of space anytime soon. You can see it's quite a thin device for a tablet. Feels nice, feels like good solid metal over here. And for a size comparison, here's the 7 inch Samsung Galaxy Tab Android OS Froyo tablet. And you can see obviously the Motorola Zoom is a lot bigger, a lot more screen real estate, and obviously you ain't going to be putting the Motorola Zoom in your pocket, whereas if you had large pockets, you might be able to fit the Galaxy Tab in. And now here we have it next to the iPad. You can see they're about the same length. The iPad is wider though. And in terms of weight, they're about the same at each 1.6 pounds for the 3G plus Wi-Fi model. Motorola sells a couple of accessories that go with this, including there's a just a charging dock, there's a charging plus HDMI dock and with built-in speakers, uh, a Bluetooth keyboard we'll show you in a minute, and this case that's 39 bucks. It's kind of a neat case. It's not leather. It's a nylon-y, neoprene, water-resistant thing. And it's got plenty of padding for the screen here, and that also works as a support, as you'll see in a minute, to stand it up. And then you've got this here with the openings for the camera, speakers, and all that stuff. And we'll stick it inside. It's a slide-in case. So to put it on, you actually slide in this part right here, hitting the volume controls by accident on the side. And you can use it, obviously, like a regular old case. Snap it in on the sides and close it up. Carry it around. Nice, it doesn't add bulk. It's pretty protective and water-resistant. So here you can use it in one of two positions, like that, more upright, more tilted, you can even drop it down nearly flat, or you can wrap the case around and use it completely flat. And this makes a lot of sense if you're going to use the Motorola's accessory Bluetooth keyboard. This also is $70. In fact, this is the same one that's bundled with the Atrix $189 dock plus keyboard plus mouse, and it works just fine, and you can set it up. That said, the on-screen keyboard is so good, I've actually been able to two-hand multi-touch type without much of a problem, and I haven't needed the keyboard as much as I thought, but it's nice to have that option. Alright, well, now we're going to dig into the software, but first I'll give you a quick rundown on the specs if you haven't learned about the Zoom yet. This has a dual-core Tegra 2 NVIDIA processor running at 1 GHz, it has a gig of RAM, 32 gigs of internal flash storage, that micro SD card sh slot that we showed you that's not yet enabled, hopefully it will be soon via a software update, that's a bit weird. It's running Android OS 3.0 Honeycomb, 5 megapixel main rear camera, 2 megapixel front video chat camera that works with Google Talk video chatting, and we tested it with Fring, and it works with Fring too. 
and you've got Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, still band N, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, Bluetooth, a GPS, and Verizon EVD or Rev A 3G with a free firmware upgrade to LTE 4G coming. Okay, let's take a look. This is the new Honeycomb interface right here, and you've still got the scrolling desktops you're used to on Android, as you can see. But they look a little bit different, kind of Tron-like there. You've got the blue outlines around each one as you're moving around to see the borders. And the widgets have changed a bit as well. You can still put shortcuts to people, contacts, and applications and stuff like that here. This does not make phone calls, however, over the cellular network, so you won't be using it over cellular. Of course, you can do VoIP calling and video chat and all that kind of thing. So say you want to customize your home screen. Press and hold, just like you would with all the Android and voila. And this is very fast, as you can see as well. And we've got a million heavyweight applications running in the background. So it gives you the panoramic view of all of your home screens over here. And here's your selection. You can choose widgets, app shortcuts, wallpapers, and other stuff. And you can just scroll through. And whenever you're interested, it's, you can just toss it right up there on your screen. Let's so say I want to have my email inbox widget. So I just pick that. And I pick an email account. While I'm at it, and that's done. When you're done, just hit the home button. Gone are the hardware buttons. Now you have everything as a software control here. This is the back button and keyboard minimize. This is your home button to bring you back to the home screen. This is your multitasking button here, and you can see we have a lot of apps actually running right now. If you want to hide that, you tap here. You've got your status here. I've got my Tweetcaster running. It's telling me I have some applications installed. I have the music player running in the background. I can just tap on that to start it again playing. And here we have just your time, Wi-Fi, battery status. And if you tap here, you can see you have individual notifications you can dismiss instead of all or none. And you see what your Wi-Fi access point is, your 3G connection, your battery status, and percentage as well. And, oh yeah, there are also tap over here, you get more stuff. You can switch to airplane mode, Wi-Fi, lock the screen orientation if you don't want it, switching portrait landscape on you. Control the brightness right here. Turn notifications on and off and get to all settings. We'll show you what settings looks like now. Much more modern and clean looking than Android 2.2 and 2.3 that we've seen on phones. Same pretty much, at least same selection of items here that you can choose from. Application management accounts and sync, privacy, and all that. And about the tablet, you can look for system updates there. As you can see, it's running Android 3. And you go back home again. Now, if you want to get to your app store with all your apps, tap up here on the apps icon, and there they are. And this is a side-scrolling. Motorola and Verizon really haven't loaded this with any applications. Many of these are actually my own that I put on here. You do get, of course, Google Marketplace, Google Books, the WebKit-based web browser. Really awesome. This is much more like Chrome with the tabbed interface. We'll show you that. Of course, Contacts, Calendar. Google Search, Google Maps, Google Navigation, Google Talk, Gmail, Email, Music Player, really cool, we'll show you that. Cover Flow with Labels here. Just tap on whatever you want. And those are those stereo speakers, which are reasonably loud, but tend to distort when the volume is set pretty high. Volume controls are on the side. They're quite small, surprisingly, for a big tablet. Of course, you have your gallery application, as always. And that really hasn't gotten much of a gussied up interface here. And it's remembering a movie that I had been playing, so I'll hit the back button. So here we are in the main view of gallery, and we've got videos that we've shot with the camera, and we've got movies that we've loaded here. So if you tap on there, if you want to see more info, you can do that before you're playing to find out what the movies are. And we'll just play Transformers. This is a high quality 800 by 480 ish resolution MPEG-4 file. Clearly no problem for the NVIDIA Tegra 2 dual core processor with GPU acceleration. Next we're going to take a look at the YouTube player which is pretty awesome. 
We'll go to the main YouTube interface first. So you've got your wall of TVs look here for all sorts of videos. Also very responsive. We'll pick something here that we know is fairly high quality. And this is when you're looking at a channel view, this is what you see. Also very nice, actually much nicer than the desktop version of YouTube. So you can scroll through their other videos here and related videos. Plays in the window there, no problem. And we can stretch it to full screen. So this is, this is YouTube Player, this is YouTube Mobile. This is not Flash 10.1 or 10.2, rather. And it looks really good. On release date, there is no Flash Player 10.2 ready yet. Adobe says it's going to take them a couple more weeks, and then you'll be able to play full Flash on this. I would say, given how the Motorola Atrix with a dual core Tegra 2 performed, it should play those videos well. Google Books. So here you've got fancy page turn animations, just like Apple's iBooks. page slider here. You can also jump to chapters, depending on how the book is formatted, and you can do things like change the brightness, set the day-night theme, text size, line height. Oddly, there is no bookmarking, however. You can make the book available offline and there it will download it to the device for you, and yes, it works also in portrait mode. So obviously, just like the iPad, this can make a very nice ebook reader. Of course, there is screen glare. That's one thing for those of you who prefer e-ink. This probably isn't going to be a device for you, but if you like reading on an LCD, pretty nice. Now we're going to take a look at the web browser, which, as you can see here, supports tabs. We've got our own website going right here. It supports pinch zooming, but because it's 1280 pixels across, there's no need to zoom right now, so don't have to. And we've got another tab running over here. No problem. This is the full Engadget site, which, as you all know, is very heavy. There's no problem with that. And you can, of course, view this in portrait or landscape mode. Settings have moved here. It's like Chrome. You've got an incognito tab for private browsing. You can get page info, share the page, search on the page, and go to more settings. So you can sync with Google Chrome over here, set your home page, autofill, manage your cookies and your cache. Go to advanced settings, including enable plugins, which will be handy once Flash is available because you might not want it to load all the time. You might just want to load it on demand. Set your text size, block pop ups, yes or no. And there you have that. So clearly it's a beautiful browsing experience. And we'll take a look at another page. We've got the full New York Times homepage. And here's a video, we'll give it a try. Most of these have been mobilized in HTML5, so it's going to play right in the YouTube player. New York Times front page videos tend to not be very high quality, though, so I'm not sure I expect much from this. It's actually looking quite nice. So I'm driving. I'm getting used to the car culture in LA. This is where life. So there you go, inline video from the New York Times webpage via the YouTube mobile player. So here we are in Google Maps, and obviously this is bigger than most portable navigation devices or some in-dash that you'll ever find, and it has all the goodness of Google Maps, including two-page, two-finger rotate of the screen, pinch zooming, street view, and all that good stuff. There we have a nice... New York City Street View. Surprisingly high quality, really. And very responsive to panning around. Next we're going to look at Movie Studio, which is a pretty basic application for creating videos. Give it a project name, say OK, and then it looks for clips to import. And do that via gallery. And you can do things like import music, export the movie, delete the project, and drop more movies in here to join them together.
And here you've got controls for stretching out the timeline, and you've got playback controls. Pretty basic. I suppose it's better than nothing. That's Movie Studio. So yes, Angry Birds runs fine. We'll show it to you. Very large birds on a 10-inch display. So yes, Angry Birds goodness is here. Obviously it runs perfectly and fills the screen. Next we're going to take a look at some applications that have been optimized for the tablet already. With CNN's reader just came out today. Takes a minute and then it loads. Very graphical looking application and you can scroll through and check out items that are here. You can filter by say politics. And this is mostly about live video. And we are doing this over Wi-Fi. So now here we've got the article. And you can scroll the text independently of the images that are on the side. Keep moving through and then the video is embedded directly in the article. And there's your CNN Live TV. Now we'll take a look at a very popular newsreader, Pulse, which has been optimized for tablet as well. Another highly graphical interface over here. You all your feeds you can select from them up and down. And then you can go sideways inside of the feed. And tap on that, and there's the article. Really sweet inline reading. And you can Facebook and Twitter with that as well. Hit back. So great use of the screen and very enjoyable way to look at the news, especially if you are a graphically oriented person. Now we're going to take a look at the 3D game Dungeon Defenders that's included with the tablet. This really makes use of the NVIDIA graphics and dual core processor. We'll look at one more third-party application here, Movies, is Flixster. You can see this is a new version that they just made available, which is obviously very tablet-aware. It looks really cool. So here you can scroll through current movies, tap on it, get information, and you can play the trailer inside the application. And the trailers tend to be mobile optimized, but this is looking pretty good. So it's nice to see that third party folks are getting their apps ready really quickly for the tablet here. Of course, this has the Android market. It's not quite the look that you're used to. It's, it's much better, in fact. So you see right here, it loads with some popular applications, and then it picks up the scrolling right here. So you can scroll through some recommended apps graphically. You can go to Categories here on the side. That scrolls independently as well. These scroll independently. If you want to search, you go here, and here you can see the keyboard that software keyboard that it comes with, which is simply fantastic. It does support multi-touch, and depending on the size of your hands, I can actually type two-handed as if I were touch-typing. Very nice. And if you'd rather speak, you've got the speech button over here. 
And of course on the home page too you can search for anything using voice or the search box for Google. So it's neat to see this playing on the 10.1 inch display, but guess what? You can plug this into your HDMI display or HDTV and watch your multimedia content. In fact, everything replicated on the screen on HDMI. And we're going to show you that by using the Atrix's HDMI cable. For some reason, this doesn't ship with one. We're just going to plug this guy right into our HDTV and give it a test. All right, now I've hooked up the Motorola Zoom to our HDTV over here, and we've used a HDMI to mini HDMI cable. The one actually that came with the Atrix, for some reason there isn't one in the box with this. And as you can see, we'll just wake that back up again. There we have our Android desktop. Looking mighty fine on a very large screen TV. And now we'll check out YouTube. And if we just want to play something from gallery. That's an 800 by 480 MPEG 4 movie that we've got loaded on the Zoom. Playing now for HDMI to the 50 inch TV. So pretty neat. You don't need a dock or anything like that to be able to do this. You just do need the cable. So that's the Motorola Zoom. It sells for $7.99 without a contract. It does have Verizon 3G built in with a free upgrade to 4G, whether you use it or not. You do not have to pay any activation fees, and you can get a month-to-month -month plan if you wish. Or you can sign a contract and get it for $5.99, making it one of the more expensive tablets on the market. But it's a pretty nice proposition, and it competes well with the iPad in terms of having 32 gigs of storage, 3G, Wi-Fi, a big 10-inch display. And some of the most cutting-edge hardware you're going to find on a tablet right now, including that dual-core Tegra 2 processor, which is very fast. This is just a joy to use. It's so quick and responsive. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Motorola Zoom Android 3.0 Honeycomb tablet available now from Verizon, Best Buy, Costco, and other sources. Visit our website to read the full review.